Hello there and welcome to this vlog of July 2022 and today's episode is going to be for the love of flex which is an absolutely wonderful app related to Battletech. I'm sure that many of you have seen this before. Uh, if you haven't though it's something I would heartily recommend. I will put the, the link down in the description exactly where you can find uh, this particular link. It's something that I do through a uh, like a laptop or a computer. Um, not sure it's really suitable for mobile phones. I'm not too sure. I've, I've never used it on a mobile phone. I'm sure you could use it on a tablet though. Um, for me though, I've kind of got a bit of a weird setup. I On my gaming table, I've got um, a music stand and I've got a pretty big laptop here, which... I can't show you right now, it's all plugged in. Um, but the laptop's got a, like a huge screen. So I put the, the laptop on the music stand and then we can literally track damage at the side of the, the table. So it's not interfering on the table, it's just kind of propped up. I just find it really useful because you can see like both at a glance, uh, play, both players can see at a glance exactly what's going on and track the data. In my mind, and I know that this is, I think how a lot of players view it, I certainly view it like this, but the fact that you can see like your damage records for your own mechs and for your opponent as well, that's kind of the in-game system of the sensors. So like your mech warriors can see what you see. So if they're targeting a certain mech, they can actually, they should be able to see that like damage um, output or whatever you want to call it because it's there on their sensors and that's what we display through the sheets now if you've obviously if we if you're doing old school battle tech and you're just going off uh, pen and paper that can be a little bit cumbersome because you const you might have to be constantly asking how many pips of damage does your archer have on its left torso or whatever and it's just a little bit like um, irritating, I think, for both parties. I think it's just easier if you've got a laptop and you just plug in like, um, you know, a couple of mouse is. I never know what the plural is on that. I never want to say mice. Two mice sounds wrong. Uh, anyway, we'll say two mice, and then you both have control, and you can both keep your own records, and the other player can then just see directly exactly what you're doing. I mean, now I know there's a lot of trust in BattleTech, and I can't say I've ever played with someone who's actively cheated. People might get it wrong sometimes, like they might uh, give damage to a left leg as opposed to a right leg. But I've never played with someone who I've thought, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're doing that on purpose. I think it's just like, a, you know, you've, you've got a lot of data to to take in uh, when it comes to the actual game. There's a lot going on. So if somebody makes a rudimentary mistake like that, I just put it down to, you know, like uh, just having that moment, momentary lapse in, con in concentration. Uh, flex obviously you can do that on this if you're not careful but I, my kind of way of thinking is if you're both looking at the screen with a damage output you, you've got two sets of eyes then looking at it directly it also doesn't seem like you're spying on your opponent like if your opponent's marking damage and you're like look at like are they doing it correctly I think that can get a little bit intimidating whereas with this it's all there like transparent and you can you can see it um, there are certainly pros and cons though with it. I've, I've heard a lot of people say in the past that they don't like doing stuff like this because of like battery concerns. So for instance, if you were doing it on a laptop and you were in a gaming venue where you didn't have, maybe, I don't know, maybe the plug is like out of reach of the computer and then, you know, the laptop dies uh, halfway through the game, what do you do? That's a legitimate concern as well. Um, so I understand that. I mean, for me, I'd always use this at home, but I think in tournament settings, we're probably not there yet. Not unless there's a, some cater, like catering for it. It's also like the way that I've got it set up. Um, you have to excuse me. It's um, thunder and lightning here. It's the well, it's the last day of June today. This will video will go out on the first of July, and we've just had like a torrential downpour, and now we've got a thunderstorm. Um, yeah, British weather. So back to this anyway. Um, so the flex thing, it does have its pros and cons. And I can see where people would be like, ah, yeah, you know, I don't want to do that. Or I don't want to encourage that because someone might come with a mobile phone. And then what do you do? Like someone's just got the app on their phone and is just tracking the data. It, that then becomes even more cumbersome than, than paper in front of you. So... I think the way that I've kind of set it up with the like the big old laptop uh, with a big screen that you can absolutely see it's on like a music stand so you can just be like oh yeah we can 
you know, we can both see, or oh, you've got multiple players, we can all see exactly what's going on. Before I get into, and I've, I've, I've called this for the love of flex, but it's going to be a very basic tutorial. But before I get into that, what I really want to discuss are some of the legalities, legalities surrounding this app, because it's actually very, very interesting. It's very interesting in regards to like the wider Battletech franchise. Now, I'm sure if you're an old hand at Battletech, you'll know that it's a very, very messy IP. Um, post FASA um, going under, which was, was it now, like 20 plus years ago, whatever it was, um, the IP was split between multiple different parties and everyone kind of got a different section. So for instance, Microsoft got the digital side of the IP. So the games, all the licensing from the games has to be done through Microsoft. But then there are other factors as well. So like Catalyst now, uh, Catalyst Games Labs, they have the, uh, the rights to uh, all the tabletop stuff. Great. Obviously, they've done a wonderful job on that. I've spoken about many times before. But anything that looks like it's interceding on what Microsoft would consider like a video game, that's where the tension arises. And Flex is unfortunately right in between that line. So we don't know really if this is... I'm not saying it's not, not that it's illegal, but Microsoft may actually just say this actually goes too close to this being a simulation. Um, or like a, almost like a video game, so it's not allowed. You can actually see how like um, interesting this is because Catalyst have got a very, very similar app to this on the go. I'll be honest, I've never checked that out because I really do like Flex and I'm pretty loyal to them, but I don't know if it will have anything like the intricacies that Flex has. Because um, Flex is really quite a nice app. It's really well designed, looks looks gorgeous. It's lacking in a lot of ways. Um, that, I don't think that's anyone's fault. We'll talk about that as we as we get into it. But uh, just for what it does on a very simplistic level, it, it's absolutely fantastic. But just so you're aware, if you, if you do get into this, it could be that one day you go on the Flex site like we are now and it's just suddenly disappeared. Uh, that will be down to the, the Microsoft in-house legal team, no doubt, flexing their muscles and uh, just saying that this app actually you know, contravenes their kind of side of the IP. Interestingly enough, and this isn't related to today's video, but uh, this does surprise a lot of people. The actual... Um, if anybody wanted to make a Battletech film, it's actually Disney that owns the rights to it. I think they, they bought it up uh, some time ago. That was certainly what I heard anyway. Um, so they're the three people that have got the, the rights. I said Catalyst Games Lab, it's actually Tops, and then Tops are owned by another company as well. So you've got three very big corporate entities who actually own uh, what is Battletech, and it can be a bit of a legal uh, like minefield. So what I'm going to do is then, I'm, I'll, I will, I'll, actually, I'll just go into the search engine and we'll just go onto one of the sheets. So we'll just type in, um, oops, get that right. We'll just type in Mad Cat here. I just go to the Madcap Prime. That's one that everybody knows, really. Um, but before I click on that, just this is kind of all the data that you can get in here. Because so you can see it's really, really detailed. They've got numerous different um, versions of uh, mechs in there. Uh, obviously, I've just typed in Mad, so we've got multiple Mad Cats. I mean, we've got things like we've got the Bounty Hunters Mad Cat from thirty sixty there. There's Eve. There's sorry, that's the Mad Cat three. Sorry. Um, there's then all the variants right down to Z. Although the way the clans do it, it's not the complete alphabet that's used, but there's a, a lot of mad cats there, as you can see. Uh, we then get into other variants, so like the, uh, sorry, other uh, types of mad cats are so the mad cat three. Uh, we then got the mark two, uh, and then we've got other mechs with mad in the title, so we've got the mad dog, and another famous mech, obviously. So you can see they've got an absolutely ton of mechs on there. Very useful as well, they actually give the year of the um of the production uh, i find that super helpful because if you want to if you're thinking about like creating a force and you know like yeah the masters uh, the master list which i might do a video on that one day as well that will have all the same data in in its database but it's just really handy obviously that you can see directly there that if you are playing a game in say the battle of tukid 3052 you can't really say to your opponent you're going to bring a mad cat m because an Adcat, Mad Cat M wasn't designed until 3068, and no doubt it's got lots of crazy technology on there that didn't actually exist in 3052. So that's useful, obviously. What I'm going to do, though, I'm just going to click onto the Prime variant so we can see what we have here. Now, before I talk about it directly, 
Very important to note, I'm only going to deal with the very rudimentaries today. Um, you've probably seen that already just because I've gone right into to one of the sheets here. There are actually functions to um, create an account with Flex. You can actually track the game like fully uh, through the app. I've never actually tried it. I've seen little bits of it and I've just messed around with it a little bit, but I've never done it fully. Uh, you can also, I believe, load your own custom files in there with your own like mechs and, and things like that. So that's obviously super useful. But for me, and I've spoken about this numerous times, I never play custom mechs. I only ever play the official variants. Uh, I've got my favourites of those variants, so I don't necessarily, you know, like in this instance, the Madcap Prime. Although a, a really great uh, version of the Madcap, I think the, um, the Madcap A is uh, particularly nice as well, so I'd, I'd probably tend to rock that one. Uh, I think it's the A anyway. I think that's the one that I, I usually quite like. Uh, there's the TC variant as well, which is good. Uh, they've got an actual specific model for that now that they released recently. So, oh, no, actually, no, they've not released it yet. Sorry, I think that's uh, on the horizon. That should be a, probably a matter of weeks away, I'd imagine, before that comes out. Anyway, back to this. So, um, I, like, like I said, I'm only going to document the very, very like basic stuff today because... Um, if you're unaware of, of Flex, um, this will kind of be a good intro to it. And if you just get used to it and maybe just follow a couple of the steps that I'm going to talk about on here, if you then really do like it, you can actually go and do the, the further stuff on there and put your own custom mechs in and actually track the full game. Um, for me personally, I think tracking the full game within like a, an app simulator like this is a little bit... Um, how do I put this? Because I don't want to sound rude about it, but that to me takes away from the actual intrinsic game because the reason I play tabletop games is so I don't really have to look at a computer. Now this is fine, just tracking damage on an app and, and it's really useful as we'll see when we get into the crux of it. But I don't want the entire game to be like dictated to by like an algorithm, if that makes sense. But that's my own personal uh, view there. Right, so let's have a look at this. I'm just going to dismiss... Uh, I think this is the section for automation, so I think that's where you can track it, but I'll just dismiss that um, and zoom in a little bit. So you can see here we have got our Madcat. It gives all the kind of data you need here, so it tells you it's the, the prime configuration. Just exactly the same as your usual sheet. So you can see we've got um, armor. It tells us what armor type as well, so you can see this is the, uh, the ferrofibrous armor. Of course, it is. it's a mud cat. Uh, and we've got the endo steel internal structure there as well. So exactly the same as, as a regular sheet. Um, where Flex really excels, though, and it's important that you do this before you actually um, undertake your game, is you really need to put in your uh, gunnery and piloting skill. So let's just go with our typical um, clan mech warrior here. So it'll be a, that'll be a gunnery of three and a piloting of four. That really does matter, especially on the piloting section, because it will change some of the data that occurs uh, in the Flex app. Uh, underneath here as well, you can see we've got this. Um, uh, this is a, a damage tracker for your uh, mech warrior. So when he takes or she takes uh, one hit, uh, you, you see that it highlights red. And then very handily, it just tells you, I think it does this on the regular sheets as well. It just says what you need to roll to avoid the KO. And then once you get to six hits, you are abandoned because your mech pilot or your mech warrior is dead as you can see there uh, but the good thing about the other why this is such a like a, a great app is because you can just remedy you see that like dead not dead so you can just fix things you don't have to mess around with any kind of you know going back and fixing coding or something like that it's all done in the back end so really really like nicely designed app uh, we've then got kind of the, the overview here of the mech in, in this box on the left-hand side. So you can see it gives us uh, walking, uh, running, just like exactly the same as the as a sheet, a regular old paper sheet. But there is one difference that you'll see when we actually go through the damage table that's super useful. Um, but it also, like, there are little things, just little, like, quality of life things there. So you can see on this side it gives you the modifiers. So plus one for walking, plus two for running, plus three for jumping. Um, that's obviously, I mean, we all know that. If you play enough Battletech, you'll know that, but, but useful. you got some data there as well, again, on the year of manufacture. Importantly, what uh, force it comes from. So this is clan tech, and then the tonnage there at 75. Um, the inventory and attack. So this is, again, all this you'll find on a regular sheet. Um, so it'll just, it just tells you exactly like where each... Um, thing is where each weapon is located or each uh, device that you've got in there you might this isn't on the madcap but you might get things like the ecm and things like that so they'd be lusted in there 
Again, something really great that, that this app does, it actually gives you the modifier for weapons. So a, a medium pulse laser, which is very accurate, that gives you a natural minus two to hit, which is lovely. Uh, it tells you that directly there. So you really can't forget if it's there in such like big black and white uh, letters next to the weapon. Uh, you get exactly the same things for the melee attack. So you can see there that it's a plus one for punching, a minus two for kicking. Um, wonderful, obviously, just that little quality of life. There's also the push and the charge there. If the mech jumped, you would get the, uh, the death from above um, section there as well. Another quality of life that I love on this app uh, is it gives you the cluster rolls. That's really useful. And for the Madcat, obviously, there are only two cluster rolls it ever uses. That's in the, um, the LRM20s. So it just gives you the full 20 uh, there. So you don't just have to keep going back to your help sheet all the time. You can just see it on the app. Why it's great though is because let's say this was uh, a Madcap that had an SRM6 on there. You would also get the cluster table for sixes. Just again, just one of those little quality of life things that speeds things up. You also get the uh, the punch and the kick tables there as well, which is again, just, just useful. It's just that little bit of space that they've optimized to, to get the most out of it. But now though, let's get into the real crux of this because this is really where this app absolutely excels. And this is in the like the damage tracker uh, on both the armor and the um, and the internal structure. I'll actually deal with those first because they're easier. We'll go into the crit critical hits table in a second, but really easy this. So you you know you you're doing um you know you you you're rolling for for damage. Uh, you roll a seven, you're attacking on the front. You see that handler gives you it there as well. So it tells you that on a seven, it's the critical torso that takes damage. Let's say it's um, an AC 10, 10 points of damage. Lovely. Uh, let's say we've had all our armor uh, stripped off. Then we just then move in. So, actually, that's not all stripped off. Two more. Madcat's got a lot of armor. Uh, once we're through that, you can see it gives you, it, again, another quality of life. Though. It gives you the numerical number. So there we've got three points of ammo left. Um, then we can take that away. We've got zero. When you hit zero on a location, obviously then go to internals. So just, again, really useful. And obviously we'll see what happens then when we max this out, we are destroyed, obviously. So yeah, super useful. But again, you can fix all that just with a, a, the touch of a button. So really, like I say, it's just a really, really well designed app. Looks great, feels great, really, really easy to use. Um, you know, kudos to whoever did this. They really did spend a lot of time on it. Um, yeah, I'll deal with the critical hit table now because that deals with it. There's also heat as well. That's, that's another factor. Why the critical hit? Sorry, say that again. Why the critical hit table is so wonderful though is because when you're doing this on a, a piece of paper. So let's say like you know you lose your LRM twenty. So let's just say we've had a through armor hit on the right torso and we rolled a a one and then a five. So the LRM here gets critted. Why it's awesome is because you see up here, it will tell you directly that the LRM20 is now out of service. Now, when we move on to do something else, so we'll just do that, yep. You can see then it grays it out. So you just know, absolutely, LRM20 is out. You can't use it anymore. You you know, any one point of damage on any crit location will kill the entire weapon. So simple. It's a lot more elaborate than that though. I mean, that of, of itself is super useful, but let's take another example here. So we'll uncrit the LRM20. Let's just take out a heat sink. So there's a double heat sink here in the right arm. Oh, look, the uh, the heat sinks there tell the tracks us directly that we're now gone down from to 32 heat from 34 because we lost one of those double heat sinks. You can obviously track that using traditional pen and paper, but especially when you're using the, the higher level mechs with more heat sinks, you just you eventually like constantly scrolling out and it just you know it wrecks your page and it just looks a little bit you know horrible and you might get things wrong with this it's just so clean and it's in real time just just a really really great user experience another thing that it does as well which i absolutely adore is let's say you damage a foot actuator so you see when we go up to the top now so that was on our left foot you can see it actually changes all the values for walking running and for the kick table so they all get highlighted in red now previously a madcap you know madcap vanilla walks at five eight that's now been reduced down to four six uh, and then you can see that the kick table there has now been impacted as well so the kick's gone you usually get you get a, a natural minus two accuracy uh like bonus to to kick 
it's now gone to minus one because obviously the mech's had its foot actuator damaged. You can then load up. So let's say you then damage a hip. So we'll crit the hip. You can see there now we've lost all our advantages on the kick and we have to do a PSR test. So it's told, a PSR rule, sorry. So it's told us we're going to have to do that. Really important, therefore, that you actually get your piloting skill right because you can see if we change this, that changes. So I'll just zoom in so you can see that. So a piloting of skill of six is a one times eight plus. We go down to a usual clan rate though, which is four. You can see it's a six plus. So that's super important. Now, why that's really great is because obviously there are lots of rules that have knock-on effects in Battletech. So, you know, if a foot actuator is damaged and a hip, hip actuator, um, they'll do different things. They'll have different consequences. And then you have to kind of remember those and factor them in when you are moving, when you are kicking, when you're doing anything. Or like, you know, like the, rev the oops, excuse me, I don't know where that came from. Um, where you need to, um, you know, really kind of focus when you should be in the game and you're having to focus on... Uh, that it just becomes a bit frustrating and I think that's what causes a lot of the mental drain it can also cause a little bit of angst as well between players you know when players are kind of saying things like well um, why is it that I've got like uh, why you've been uh, you're running at uh, six when you should have been running at four can you keep your record straight on this it obviously does it all for you so it just takes so much of the grind out for you Um not much else to say. I mean, I can keep going with this. You, I can keep, you know, you can lose a lower arm actuator. You can see there that the punch now goes up to plus three. Uh, it brings the damage ratio down. It also, as well, it puts a plus one uh, to hit there on the two weapons that are on the left arm because obviously it's harder for your mech to target. Stuff like this. I mean, there's an argument to suggest it does make players lazy because why would you bother really kind of reading through the rules when it's all there for you? But in my, I don't agree with that. I actually think once you get used to playing in this way with this app, you then learn the rules just by playing. So, like, you know straight away, as soon as that lower actuator gets hit and it re flashes up there in red, that's really going to resonate with you, I think, more than having to go into a, um, a rule book and actually say, what, what is it, again, that a, a lower arm actuator does? So you get it here directly. And I think, obviously, the more that you play and the easier the game is, and this app really makes the game easier... It's just, it makes things a, a lot less, um, I think, irritating and, and takes a lot of the grind out of everything. Um, another thing that this app does, which is really, really useful, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the uh, one of the side torsos. So we'll just crunch that down to its full. You can see that actually this now is crippled. Now, if you are playing um, a certain rule uh, base, which I play a lot, which is force withdrawal, that cripple tag is really important. Now, in the rules as written, and I play it as rules as written, um, the crip, it, just getting crippled mean, doesn't mean that you're out of the game. It means that your mech can actually back up. Some people don't do that, though. Some people tend to just say, well, if you're crippled, you're just out. Like, it's just kind of seen as a white flag surrender. Um, if the mech warrior is still alive, they'll just kind of eject and they're out of the game. That obviously speeds the game up, so... I think that's a, a very decent way to play. I personally, though, like to be a little bit more tactical in that I think a crippled mech still has kind of the, the almost the saluted, I'm out of here, but I can still fire. Uh, it still makes them a target, though. Like You can still attack them and t potentially blow them up and kill the, the mech warrior. But I just uh, you, there are many different ways to play crippled uh, rules or force withdrawal rules. Um, I say I play rules as written. Um, but this mech, this sorry, this app is really, really useful because by giving you that data, just saying crippled, it it again takes out so much grind because there are little rules like if you get, I can't, I can't remember them because I've used the app for so long. But it's something like if you get three points of internal damage across three different locations, then you are uh, listed as crippled. If you lose a side torso, you're listed as crippled. So there's lots of different uh, reasons why you would get that. I think as well, one that gets people as well on the on the crippled rule is if you get a gyro and an XL hit, um, so one of each, then you're technically crippled as well. And that's why I'm a little bit apprehensive about playing such draconian rules where you say, well, if you're crippled, you're out of the game. Because I'm like, okay, it's not actually too hard to do a gyro and an XL hit. So that would probably make uh, mechs very, very squishy, even the big ones. There's some people like that because it obviously means they get quicker games. Um... I think that's about well the other thing here is heat as well so heat's a, a super important factor obviously um why heat is really useful in the flex app though is let's say let's just put bump ourselves up to 15 heat in fact what i'm going to do is 
I'm going to create another tab here. So we'll just do another Madcap Prime, just so I've got a clean um, slate here. Um, we'll just bring ourselves up to 15 heat, and you can see what's wonderful about this. That actually has given us direct impact on the movement. So it tell, tells us here we can only walk two and run, um, and run three. Now it doesn't put in the, um, there are other things here like the modifiers to hit. So it doesn't automatically give you modifiers to hit on the weapons which I actually think is a good idea, otherwise that page will become very convoluted as your mech starts to kind of get beaten up. So you you've just have to keep your eye still on the heat table, but it's all there. It tells you exactly what in red uh, changes. So for instance, if we go up to 25, you can see it now. You, what this means is you don't have to do ammo exposure, uh, sorry, ammo explosion rolls for every one. So you don't have to do the, the plus four here and then the plus six here. You just do the plus six if you go above that 25 heat threshold. Um, one little thing about this, and I'm just trying to remember, I don't even know if I can remember how to do this. Um, here we are. There is this. It does have something quite fun on this. If your mech does get knocked over, you can do this. <laughs> I don't know why. I just really like that. It just does that little slant to the side, um, which is useful, obviously, especially if you're playing with multiple mechs um, that are of the same kind of design. So if you've got multiple Mad Cats on the table, it's good to know which ones are standing and which ones are you know are, are able to move. Um, you can also you can upright it. Um, obviously, and then you can shut down the mech as well for any reason. So it just then comes list as immobile. Uh, that's useful as well because if anything happens, you know, like if you have a heat critical problem and your mech has to shut down, you can actually just list it there. And it very handily then just kind of goes through, like it, it just blanks out all the weaponry, which basically says you can't use it. Um, so just super useful. So that's kind of really the basics of Flex. Um, I can't recommend it enough. I think it's 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 life changing in BattleTech. Um, I've not yet had a look at the Catalyst uh, version. I think they've got an app out that's that's presumably similar to this. But again, I mean, I, it might be subscription. I'm not sure. I've never really looked into it because I'm so comfortable with the Flex app, and I don't really want to learn anything else. Although that may change, as I said previously, there are potential copyright hiccups here. Um, going forward although we should be okay i think because I, I believe flex has existed for quite a while now so if, if microsoft were very unhappy about it or upset i'm sure it would have been like dealt with already because the battletech um ip is nefariously uh difficult and i'm sure that the the lawyers in all these different camps have got their eyes on what the other parties are doing so they don't infringe on their section of um of the ip Right, I think that's about it, to be honest. Um, I don't think... This, I'm just trying to desperately think of anything else that I haven't shown there. Um, I don't think... So. I mean, it, again, like 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 with everything that, that I've shown you there, you can track almost everything that's going on um, with the uh, with the mech, including things like, like life support. So you can see, uh, like, for instance, if the cockpit gets destroyed, you're dead. Your mech warrior is dead. Um, fills out his um, all his hits there as well. So just the, you can explore it and have a look. And again, keep your eye on that uh, on the crippled tab as well, because you'll see there. Like if you do, I mean, we can have we can actually do this in real time. So if I get rid of a gyro and an Excel engine, you can see we are crippled. Uh, just super useful. I tell you what, it is useful because you sometimes might forget that. Like, you know, you've got so much going on in the game, so you might actually just completely forget that your mech is up and active for like three turns and change the course of the game. There's no ignoring the big like red tab here saying crippled. So yeah, just really, really useful. So that's it. Um, hopefully you found that useful. Um, do try it out. It's a wonderful app. Um, just a little public service announcement. I'm traveling with work uh, all of next week, so there will be no video next week, unfortunately. Um, when I come back though, I've got a little bit of a, a routine set up. I want to do a few more law videos. So I've got a few things in mind, uh, but I'm unfortunately not going to get time to record them before I um, leave, because I'm, I'm leaving uh, tomorrow actually. So there we go. Um, one other point of note as well, we've still not had any um, data on the Kickstarter, um, which is, I still think we, we're still in early days on that. I would imagine it will start filtering through over the next month. 
obviously when that happens i will do a, a cheeky little video explaining uh, what we're getting i think a few people are doing them though now it's which is good to see because i think when you've got like um, a gaming system like we have um, where there's quite a lot of buzz around it and youtube channels even tiny ones like me are doing these things i think that's uh, that's a good sign you certainly like you get that a lot with like games workshop products it's complete oversaturation though so uh, hopefully at the moment we're still very much undersaturated really on people talking about this so um good time to get into it um because i think it's it's only going to grow it's only going to get better and i think this kickstarter could be very special because they are um certainly going in the right direction there's going to be a lot of great things out over the next few months especially like with the mercenary units anyway i'll leave it there and i'll thank you very much for watching and i'll hopefully catch you again next time <laughs>